So Susan, you've been with Salesforce for seven years now. That's right. And most recently, Salesforce has started to embed AI and ML into the product with Einstein. And as you work across the various companies in pharma, you know, how are they, you seeing them use these tools to help transform their commercial model to meet this changing world of, of a value-based healthcare that we're talking about here? Yeah. I guess the first comment I would make is just listening to um, the panelists. I mean, everyone here has a story around ML and algorithms and big data on the panel. Um, but I think what is captured is the speed at which everyone felt the impact to their business. Um, and I think that is true very, very generally across many industries, like the AI moment that we're in is not just something that's happening in this space. It's, it's very, very predictable across every industry. And it's just, it was a perfect confluence of algorithms, big data, and compute power all like hitting the scene at the same time. So you know, before I make a comment on pharma, I just wanted to take a step back on adoption uh, generally, because we live, um, certainly we see the froth and the hype in the news, you know, the year of AI and you know, everything in your news feed is, is AI and machine learning. So we're surrounded by it um, in the news. We're surrounded by it in our personal lives. Uh, you know, everything from, we had a nice conversation at lunch about how we all talk to Alexa. Uh, but there's other things we do. We rely on ways to plot our journey to the airport or ESPN algorithms to help figure out our fantasy teams. Like, it's super pervasive all of a sudden on a personal level. And yet, when we look inside the four walls of our companies, um, I mean, we've got some real innovators on the panel here, but it's not that easy. And um, just some numbers to put out there. Um, it was MIT and BCG, they did a study of CEOs in terms of the impact of AI to their businesses for competitive uh, differentiation. And 84% of them said, full stop, one of the most important things we can do. But the same group of 84 people who said it was super important to their business, only 39% of them have an actual strategy that they're executing on. So it's still very elusive. So that's one number. Another number was a study done by Forrester Group, and it was in the category of what keeps you up at night about your business and AI. And again, this is a general industry one, not specific to health and life sciences or pharma. But the 66% of the respondents, like if you net down all the questions they asked, it came down to two impacts. One is, we don't have the talent. We don't have the skill. We're competing with tech. Like we don't have as many data scientists as we have projects to run. And then the second thing, was a little bit more nuanced. Like, even if we did, will our people who need to act on these things be able to absorb it and use it? Like, will it be approachable? Can we embed it in real business processes, or will it look separate and scary? So that's like 66%. So there are like, there's a lot of things going on. So don't, like, don't feel bad if your like, strategy isn't ready yet, because we're still in very early days here in terms of leveraging AI. Now, just a kind of a switch to what we see in, in uh, health and life sciences, and I have a personal story on this. I wasn't there in 1950, but it was <laughs> only a couple decades after where I built a lot of um, sales performance management systems in health and life sciences. And um, I kid you not, I come back to it 30 years later, and the only thing that's changed is the platform. So I'll date myself. When we first were building these things, it was timeshare. Like, this was before mainframes, and so then we saw it through mainframe and client server, and now, guys, we're kind of back to timeshare with companies like Salesforce, Amazon, Azure, things like that. But the process is the same, and so if you look at, you know, just the way some of our trailblazers, this is what we call our customers who are, you know, taking full stock of the tools available to them and AI and deploying it in their ecosystems, our trailblazers are doing stuff like standing the traditional business model on their head with letting their data, like the institutional knowledge that's trapped in their data, like let that, let that loose. And I'll give you a couple of examples. One on the commercial model, which is what your question was. Um, it, you know, in an older model, it was basically like here's the territory, we've got the physicians, we've categorized them, and you're gonna do activities and we're gonna count them. And it's a very indirect approach, like the, the highest paid person in the room, the, the hippo model of designing a business process, said, these are the things that are going to drive outcome, and therefore you will do them. And now what we see happening with people using Salesforce CRM and the AI we have is having the data help 
guide that call planning to help not just determine like what ad to throw at an eyeball when you're running a marketing campaign, but to really do some outcome-based understanding in terms of um, what physicians should we be meeting with, what real materials should we be using, what programs actually drive value, like the real things that actually drive value, and then on a scale of diminishing returns, like are more activities better? Or will the data tell us that you've just like hit max outcome here because you did five calls in this hospital network and the sixth and the seventh and the ninth call like just aren't there? So these are all stories of having the institutional knowledge and data wrapped right around the CRM system driving productivity of the commercial sales teams. And on the comment of productivity, you, you know, with Salesforce and CRM, I guess you can't make a comment around data getting into the system because that's so pervasive. Part of the AI that we've also brought to market is, is around those productivity gains in terms of helping the sales teams capture that information so they're not just masters of typing it into an activity capture system. So it becomes very kind of full loop in terms of offering a guidance system for a better commercial model with the data in your business. And so that's a commercial example. We've got other examples of people who use it more with the pace eccentricity, where things like patient care coordinators can look at uh, program, program participants and outputs, and again, have the data tell the story in terms of, are there bottlenecks to get someone on this therapy? therapy? If so, what are they? And what can we do to remove them? So you know, real, um, you know, real embedded, actionable, explainable, human-centric AI deployed against the types of systems we're doing at Salesforce. Our trailblazers, I should add, our customers. <laughs>